Hello and welcome to another tutorial with me, Andrew. Today, it's going to be a little bit different to my usual format. We'll be creating a three-dimensional line using the additive pipe and array modifiers, amongst other tools to create this festive decoration. So, without further ado, let's kick things off by creating a new document and going into the part design workbench on our dropdown. I'm going to create a sketch and I create that on the XZ plane. I'm going to start by creating a diamond shape around the center point of our drawing. So I'm going to create this like so, constraining it to the horizontal and vertical axis. And then I'm going to constrain the vertical by pressing on this point, holding control, pressing shift V, and I'm going to set that to eight mil. I'm going to click on the horizontal points, again, holding control, press shift H, and I'm going to set that to eight mil as well. So we've now got eight mil in the horizontal and we've got eight mil in the vertical. I'm going to click on the two points that are in our horizontal and I'm going to click on our center line. I'm then going to click on the symmetry icon, which will then constrain our points in the symmetrical. And as you can see, it will now throw up an issue. If we click on that, it will highlight this point here. And it's saying that we are over constrained basically. And I'm just going to hit the delete on the keyboard, which will then center up our points. I'm then going to do exactly the same for our vertical ones clicking on both of them, clicking on our horizontal line, and clicking on the symmetry icon. Again, it'll throw up an issue. We'll click to select, and we'll just hit delete. And there we have it, we have a fully constrained drawing. So we now have one of our diamonds, and we are now going to create a second one, again on the XZ plane. For the second diamond, we just need to recreate what we've just done. So I'm going to click on our polyline tool, and we're going to offset it down here, and I'm going to click on the center point, move out, click back on the center point, and just create a diamond like so. So again, this one's going to be 8 mil, so I'm going to click on here, click on these two points, shift H, 8 mil. I'm going to click on the right hand point, or left hand point, either or, click shift H again, which is going to then uh, set a constraint between our point and our origin. And I'm going to set that to 4 mil, because that's half of 8. And I'm then going to do exactly the same with the vertical shift V 8 mil and so we have something like this so I'm going to get these two points here and I'm going to create a horizontal constraint constrain these two points by clicking on this point here hold a control clicking on our bottom point pressing shift V and setting that to 4 mil so we've now got one degree of freedom which is just our overall whereabouts it is on our drawing so I'm going to click on our top point of our diamond, press shift V, and I'm going to set that to minus 56 mil. We now have a fully constrained sketch, and I'm just going to click close. So we now have two separate diamond sketches, as you can see in our model tree, and this will become apparent in a minute when we use the additive pipe. So I'm going to hide this body, click off of it, and create a new body by clicking on this icon up here. So now I want to create a datum plane. So how do we do that without actually having any geometry on the screen? Well, what we can do is over here, you can see that the origin is currently invisible on our new body. So I'm going to click on that, press the spacebar, and I'll bring up all of our datum planes. I'm then going to click on the XY plane, and I'm just going to press the datum plane button, which is then going to allow us to create a datum plane. I'm then going to move that up in the Z by five millimeters, like so and I'm just going to press OK. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to hide the origin again, just so that it's out of our way. Clicking on our datum plane and then clicking the sketch icon, I'll now start sketching new geometry for our islet. So I'm going to grab the polyline tool, and I'm just going to sketch some quick geometry. I'm then going to set the vertical of this line to 4mm. As you can see, I overshot that quite a lot. And I'm just going to set the symmetry of these two points to our horizontal line, like so. Again, it will click up this, and I'm going to delete that. I'm then going to offset our vertical line here from our origin point by clicking on this point, pressing Shift H, and setting that to 1mm. When it comes to these two lines, I'm going to click on this top one, press Shift H, set that to 0.5, and I'm going to roughly position this one like it is to the opposite. I'm going to click on our center arcs tool, click on our center origin point, and connect these two lines. And as you can see, it will constrain like so. And I'm going to close that, 
hide our datum point plane, select our sketch in the side tree, and I'm going to click on the revolve tool, which you'll find up here on the tool ribbon. Make sure it's set to vertical sketch axis, and I'm going to click OK. So as you can see, we have now created the eyelet for our festive decoration. So I'm now going to rename the body with our eyelet in, and I'm just going to simply name that as eyelet. That just makes it a little bit easier for myself and a little less confusing for you. You'll notice now that I'm in FreeCAD 0.18. Unfortunately, 0.19 crashed and is currently not reopening for me. So I'm just going to continue using 0.18 to finish off our decoration. So now we're going to move over to the draft workbench. So I'm going to click on the drop down and click on draft. In here, we're going to create a three dimensional line which will allow our two diamond shapes to flow around our additive path. So to create our three dimensional line, first we're going to make sure that we're in the top view. What this will do is when we create our B spline, it will allow our B spline to be going downwards to our sketches. So I'm going to click on the B spline icon, which is up here on the tool ribbon and you'll see this left box. Now, as you can see, as I move my mouse around the screen, you'll see that the coordinates change. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that relative is ticked on and that filled is ticked off. Basically, filled is if you were to have a circle, square, triangle, any geometry or line that uh, connects to itself again, uh, what it will do is it will create a face across those lines. Relative is basically, if I was to untick that, it would be from our origin point rather than from the last point that we clicked or selected. So I'm going to make sure the relative is selected and I'm going to start setting the points. So I'm going to click on our first box and type zero. I'm going to press the tab button on the keyboard and that will move us on to our next coordinate system. So I'm going to hit zero again. And as you can see, the global Z is already zero. So I'm going to click enter point. Our next point is minus 14 tab minus 11 and then in our global z it's minus 15. Now as you can see I have put those coordinates in but if I was to move my mouse or cursor back onto the grid you'll see those numbers change straight away. So I'm just going to retype those back in again so minus 14, minus 11 and minus 15. I'm going to click enter point and we have now created our first line. So it's basically created a line between the two coordinates we've put in. For our third point the x is minus 16 the Y is 11, and the Z again is minus 15. I'm going to click enter point, and it's now moved back in. For our fourth point, I'm going to set the X to 16. I'm going to set the Y to 11, and again the Z is minus 15. And for our final point, the X is 14, the Y is minus 11, and the Z is minus 15. Enter point. So now I'm just going to close off of that, and as you see, it will create our B spline. And as you can see, it has gone through our points and also a three dimensional line. So now that we've got the components we need to create our additive pipe, I'm going to move back into the part design workbench. I'm going to go back over to our model tree and I'm going to hide the eyelet that we created earlier. I'm then going to activate our body, which is our two sketches, by clicking on the body right clicking and clicking on toggle active body. I'm then going to select either one of our diamond shapes that we created earlier and I'm going to click on the additive pipe icon which can be found up here. So our object is now the sketch, our corner transition is set to transformed and now we just need to select our object. Now if I was to select object and select on the path nothing would actually happen. So if I delete that out, click on add edge and then select our B spline something will happen. I'm not entirely sure why just adding an edge actually works for this B spline. I'm guessing that's because we created it in the draft workbench rather than the part design workbench. But if you know, let me know in the comments down below. So as you can see, we have now got our additive pipe flowing around our 3D line. At the bottom here, you can see that it's not connecting to our second diamond shape. So I'm going to click on the transform mode, click multi-section, add section, and click on our diamond shape. I'm going to leave the orientation mode set to standard and I'm going to click OK. This one now asks me if I want to make an independent copy and I'm going to say OK. If you want to learn more about the additive pipe modifier, click on the pop out banner above where I've already created a video going into more detail.
Now that we've got our additive pipe, I'd like to add a mirror modifier to this. What this will do is, is when we revolve our shape, it will create two struts going in different directions. Not only does this make the part look nice, but I think it also adds a little bit more rigidity to our design. If we take a look at the example where I didn't use a mirror modifier, you'll see that all the struts are going in the same direction. I would say that this particular design isn't as structurally sound as the one we're about to create, mainly because as they all go in the same direction and they flow in the same direction, this can easily twist and break. So I'm going to click back on my document. I'm going to select the additive pipe and I'm going to click on the mirror modifier. This will then bring up something like this and I'm going to make sure that it's selected on the YZ plane. So as you can see, we now have our additive pipe and it's mirrored. What I want to do now is I want to create a revolution or a pattern which will revolve around our center point. So I could use the polar pattern up here on the toolbar. However, for this, my computer kept on freezing, crashing, and I don't think it's really the best option for this particular part. So I'm going to go back over to the draft workbench and I'm going to use an array modifier. So I'm going to click on our mirrored section, which is this part, and I'm going to click on the array, which is up here on the tool ribbon. This will then bring up something like this, and as you'll see, it's sort of moved our part in a linear direction. And that's because we need to alter some of these settings on the side. So firstly, I'm going to change the X and Y. They're going to go back down to 1, like so. I'm going to set the polar to 5. I'm going to set fuse to true. So what that will do is that will fuse all of our shapes once they've been revolved. And I'm also going to set the array type from author to polar. I'm then going to click on our drawing and that should update. So as you can see, because it's fused together, we've got individual edges and lines for where the part intersects with itself. So the reason I set the polar to five uh, is because of two reasons. Number one, if you were to increase the polar to say like 10, 20, 30, uh, your computer obviously will take a little bit longer to figure out that pattern. Uh, and number two, also, if you're going to 3D print this, you need some way of getting on the inside of the actual shape, especially if you're using support structures to support, say, like the top of the model. So you need to be able to get on the inside. As you can see, we now have something that looks like a festive decoration. So to complete this, we now need to fuse our eyelet and our array. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the part workbench on the drop down. I'm going to select the eyelet and I'm also going to press control and select the array. I'm then going to click the union or the fusion button, which is on the tool ribbon up here. This will then fuse both the bodies together, which will then create more of a stable shape for you to export into a 3D printing software. Everything I've shown you in this tutorial can easily be changed to your personal preference, such as the thickness of the struts and the overall shape of our festive design. This is simply just a guide to get you on your way. And that will be all for today's tutorial. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I hope you've enjoyed creating this festive decoration. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, but if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. As always, have an absolutely epic weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.